Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Coming up, over $700,000 to upgrade three primary schools and work progressing satisfactorily on reconstruction of West Bridge. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Yell and tell if someone tries to abuse you. Tell until someone believes you and they do something about it. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Thanks for staying with us. The Honorable Minister for Education, Peter Seja, has revealed that three schools have recently been upgraded with the assistance of donor agents. Honorable Seja made the pronouncement at Wednesday's sitting of Parliament. The Honorable Minister for Education declared that over $345,000 was injected into the Kaliho Primary School and come January 2017, students will return to an improved institution of learning. The Education Minister used the opportunity to thank the people of the Kaliho constituency for their understanding and patience following the havoc caused by Tropical Storm Erica on the school. We have dialogued with the school community and they understand the situation. The school is completely renovated. In fact, Honorable Member for Kali Ho, you have a brand new school in Kali Ho. And at this moment, Madam Speaker, we, works is actually being done on the toilet block because we believe that while the school building itself is necessary, that a school without appropriate toilet facilities is of non-effect. The Honorable Minister gave details of renovations done at the school. We have put in fencing and we have ensured we have actually expanded the, the land area, the land surface area to ensure that children will create a safe environment for students and staff. Meanwhile, Honorable Seja stated that in excess of $365,000 has been injected into the Dalis Primary School. He reassured the people of Dalis that he has been given every assurance from the Honorable Minister for Finance and Cabinet that their needs will be addressed. Renovation at the school is 99% complete. All that is missing to be put in place is just a few windows that have been ordered. Once they are delivered, they will be mounted. And Madam Speaker, that is less than 10 windows. So Madam Speaker, a transformed Dalis Primary School. Students at the Kulibi Street Primary School are already enjoying the upgrades at their school after returning in September 2016. Over $20,000 was invested to execute renovations at that school. The Honorable Minister also expressed gratitude to the Barbados Cares, the President's Charities Foundation, and others for their contributions. We believe that we have a responsibility as state, as government, to the people of Dominica. And this is why, Madam Speaker, following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, the government recognized that every child ought to be given an opportunity at quality education. As the debate in the House of Parliament continued on Thursday, the Honorable Minister for Health and Environment, Dr. Kenneth Daru, voiced his support for the supplementary appropriation of over $103 million now before the House. A large amount of that sum was spent to assist those affected by Tropical Storm Erica. The Petit Savan constituency was the area worst hit by the storm. As Member of Parliament for that constituency, Honorable Daru expressed gratitude particularly for the affected families of Dubic who were relocated to Centre in Grand Bay just one year after the storm. Honorable Daru says this is a clear sign for a vote of full confidence in the Honorable Prime Minister. The residents of Dubic and the vast majority of the residents of Petit Seven, Madam Speaker, has this motion, Madam Speaker, of confidence in our Honorable Prime Minister, Madam Speaker. And 
And in fact, Madam Speaker, since Erica, we would have hosted a number of regional and sub-regional meetings here in Dominica. And one of the side events would be a tour to the areas affected by the servant Dubic. And I recall sometime last year mm -hmm. the, the, the um, center area of, of Grand Bay where the Dubic residents are relocated was one of the areas that we, we visited. I remember some colleague ministers of mine asking me, um, what's the arrangement, you know, I mean, well, how are they going to pay for these houses? And when, we, when they were told, Madam Speaker, that these houses are going to be given free of charge, Madam Speaker, free of charge, not the home, not the land, Madam Speaker, the prime land we're talking about, Madam, was going to be sold to them. They couldn't believe their eyes, Madam Speaker. And we have 50 families, Madam Speaker, 50 owners of, as my colleague from the Honorable Minister, who is spanking new buildings in a prime area in Grand Bay for the Dubic Residence, Madam Speaker. So if this, if this isn't enough, Madam Speaker, just one year after Rika, to move a motion of full confidence in the Honorable Prime Minister, Madam Speaker, I don't know what is. Honorable Daru also refuted the opposition's notion that Petit Savan is habitable. He reaffirmed the government's decision to relocate the community for its safety. I want to tell the Honorable Senator that it's for no fault of anybody, Madam Speaker, that entered because America came. And the experts, upon experts, have to advise us that Petit Servant is, I hope I get it right, uninhabitable, Madam Speaker. It is uninhabitable, so I'm not sure what the good senator is talking about when he says to look at it at a case-by-case -case basis. The whole area is compromised, Madam Speaker, and the experts have advised us. And in fact, as we speak, we are expecting a, another team from the UE and, and a various other institutions, Madam Speaker, one year later, to do a review just to pass back and to let us know whether or not um, what they still think, if the original sorry opinion of Peter Savant still stands, Madam Speaker. The Petit Savant constituency has also largely benefited from the National Employment Program. Close to 100 individuals from that constituency were added to the program this year. Right now, I could show you, Madam Speaker, the fantastic would be done by my NEP teams in the 57 constituency, the Bagatelle Fusilier, beautification, Madam Speaker, keeping the area clean. This would be, it, it would make a lot of sense, Madam Speaker. I mean, you could shift all you want to project it, Madam Speaker, so they could see where the, where the thousands of dollars that's being spent, how it's being spent, Madam Speaker, and it's being put to good use. To in more news, reconstructing the West Bridge is part of government's plan to improve the city of Roseau. Ground was broken in April and soon after, work began on constructing the bridge. GIS's Kimani Seja filed this report on the ongoing project. Construction for the new West Bridge began in May of 2016. The contractor for this project is NSG Management and Technical Services Limited. GIS News took its camera to the project site to see how the work is going. Senior Project Manager Mike Evans of NSG Management and Technical Services Limited says work on the bridge is progressing smoothly. He explained that most of the foundational works have already been done with minimal disruptions. This includes successful demolition of the Old West Bridge, further dredging of the Rosa River and the deep installation of several support beams. A temporary beam has also been erected to facilitate work. We have to divert the beam, um, the protective beam, and then we will proceed with the works on the south side, i.e. we'll commence in the, the remaining excavation of the existing south abutment, we'll then construct the new south abutment and new pier, uh, and at the same time we'll be ongoing with the construction of the new wall. Well, once we've cast the, the completed the, the substructure of the bridge, we then uh, will construct the superstructure, which is like the bridge deck. So we'll put the steel gardens, the bearings, etc. We'll place the metal deck in, uh, and then we will put a temporary platform, which will facilitate the construction of a, a new bridge deck, handrail, street lights, and then we have the reinstatement works. To he explained that working alongside the river itself poses the greatest challenge. It's a very challenging project in that, uh, you know, uh, water is a, 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 you know, a very powerful element. Uh, we're working adjacent to the river uh, and, and Tropical Storm Matthew uh, luckily didn't cause too much delay or, or, or damages uh, and hence the, the, the protection of the, the temporary berm that we've constructed. Uh, but it's a challenge because you're working below river level, so I enjoyed the challenge. Lead engineer on the project representing the Ministry of Public Works is Alexis George. George agreed that the Ministry of Public Works and Government by extension is satisfied with the steady progress of the project. 
as far as the client is concerned, um, we think that work is progressing satisfactorily. Um, we've had uh, minor, some minor challenges, as you, as you would expect with any major project, um, as well as the weather, um, tropical sun mafia and uh, the tropical waves that we've experienced um, since the project has commenced. But we are confident and we have put measures in place in working with the contractor to ensure that we can complete on time. Reconstruction of the West Bridge is part of government's overall plan to rehabilitate the city of Roseau under the Roseau Enhancement Project. A new bridge was also needed because the old one was further structurally compromised by Tropical Storm Erica. With the old structure, um, that structure was decades old. Uh, Tropical Storm Erica did impact on that bridge and the structural integrity of the bridge. Um, it sustained major damages. It was closed for a period of time as a result. Um, so that, among other things, we felt that a new structure was necessary. So this structure will be improved in some structurally. It will also be taller uh, above the riverbed level. Um, so we don't expect when the river swells to impact on the, on the bridge um, as, it was, as it did in the previous, in the previous structure. Um, it's a two-lane structure as compared to the other ones as a single lane. Um, so overall, with the, the future, future plans that we have for the, for the city, we think that this will be a complementary project for the overall plan for Rosso. Additional features to the bridge include street lights and pedestrian sidewalks. St. Johnston Avenue will also be rehabilitated as part of this project. Several traffic arrangements have been made to accommodate work on the bridge. Evans also expressed his satisfaction that the new arrangement is working well. We agree the, the traffic diversion plan with the uh, local police and, and also with the, the client. We had uh, uh, meetings with the minibus drivers to mitigate and minimise any, any disruption. Uh, obviously we've, we've closed the site and segregated the site limits with safety fencing and signage. Uh, so the, the impact is being, you know, we've tried to minimise this uh, and, and the traffic diversion is working well. Ground for the $18.2 million project was broken in April and construction began in May of this year. Evans is confident that his company can deliver the complete project by the scheduled deadline of May 2017. Several local contractors are employed on the project and Evans says he is satisfied with the provision of construction materials from local companies. As we said that the groundbreaking uh, ceremony is the uh, target is to subcontract the work to local subcontractors which we have done to date. Uh, so in total now you have about 30 uh, staff and, and labour on site uh, and we thoroughly appreciate the efforts of the local vendors and suppliers in Dominica. Reconstruction of the West Bridge is funded by the Citizenship by Investment Programme. Kimani Seja for GIS News. Thanks, Kimani. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Let's have some fun, eh? I'm not ready for your kind of fun yet. But everybody else is doing it. But I'm not everybody else. I'm me, and I want to do well in school. Well, you definitely get an A for attitude. I plan to get an A in life, and then I think of your kind of fun. So what am I to do in the meantime? You'll survive. Say no when you're not ready. Use condoms when you are. Welcome back. A one-day basic training course in Customs and Trade Facilitation was hosted by the Ministry of Trade, Energy and Employment on Thursday. The aim is to facilitate enhanced professionalism and harmonization of customs procedures within the Carrefourum region. The course is one of the activities under the Carrefourum EU Capacity Building Project on Competition, Public Procurement and Customs and Trade Facilitation funded under the 10th European Development Fund. The project supports the beneficial integration of Carrefourum and member states in the world economy. At the opening ceremony, EPA coordinator Yvonne Baron-George described the aim of the EPA. 
The EPA aims to promote trade and investment between both sides, both the EU and CARI Forum, in an effort to enhance sustainable growth, employment, and development. It takes into consideration the socio-economic circumstances in CARI Forum states by offering asymmetric rights and obligations, specific safeguards, as well as transition periods for taking on the commitments under the agreement. The EPA also promotes dialogue and cooperation in areas such as technical barriers to trade, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, competition, procurement, and customs and trade facilitation. The one-day session was prompted by a training needs assessment carried out in customs and trade facilitation within the CARI Forum countries. Dominica, like all the other member states of CARI Forum, intends to honor the commitments made in the EPA and so to seek to take advantage of opportunities created by the agreement. However, like all the other member states of CARI Forum, we face a variety of challenges in implementing the agreement and in fully exploiting the, oppo the opportunities which may be created by it. The project is designed to deliver training at three levels and in all three of the focal areas. The level one basic training which is being conducted here today is geared towards addressing implementation capacity deficit in the specific area of customs and trade facilitation. It is targeted towards public officers as well as private sector agencies with responsibility for trade. It will enhance the human and institutional capacity to better allow carry forum states to honor their commitments and attain the objectives of the EPA. During the course, participants focused on customs valuation, customs tariff classification, post clearance audits, risk management, custom management, coordinated border management, and strategic trade control. I have been informed reliably that we'll be given full explanation of the key areas of trade facilitation measures contained in the EPA during this um, workshop. And we'll be also discuss some of the challenges associated with the implementation and also the non-compliance of the EPA within the region. You will learn about specialized areas in the modern customs environment, such as risk management, post-clearance audit, rules of origin, HS classification, and how the knowledge and application contributes positively to improving the trade, trading environment. Regional expert in customs and trade, Claude Paul, is facilitator of the workshop. You get a, a broad understanding of the trade facilitation measures that are contained in the EPA and some of the issues and challenges that we face in the region in terms of implementation today. And I would want to draw on your own experiences here in Dominica with some of the um, some of the, the measures that you have tried to introduce. Coming up on your tip of the day, why you should get a regular eye checkup. There is a silent, invisible killer in our midst, a killer which largely goes unnoticed as it plies its deadly trade. Its name is secondhand tobacco smoke, which has a far greater impact on persons inhaling this poison than on smokers themselves. Secondhand tobacco smoke is especially detrimental in public places and negatively impacts our national health as well as public health expenditure. Stop this invisible killer now. Say no to secondhand tobacco smoke in public places. A public health message brought to you by the Ministry of Health and the Pan American Health Organization. Seeing an eye doctor once a year is maybe the most important thing you can do for your eyes and your general health. These checkups can let you know about vision problems you may have and help you fix them with glasses or contact lenses. Having clear vision can improve your quality of life and can also help you avoid headaches and other eye-related health problems. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. 
like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica, and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus. Thank you.